Hi guys, uh, since uh, for me it was quite a challenge to, to understand what was I doing wrong in order to get uh, the RSSI readout with the Tyrannus, I thought I'd make a quick video and show you how you make it. Uh, because what happened is that uh, Tyrannus, according to the latest European uh, Union regulations, they changed the firmware on the radio and in this case uh, it was not compatible with the D8 uh, protocol, only with the D16. So basically everybody having the D8, uh, D8 RXPE or the PLUS with XP firmware could not uh, read out the RSSI data. So in order to do it, uh, what you need to do is to, is to purchase, you have to go on the, on the normal way with the official, let's say, tool. From Frask, Frysky, uh, you need uh, this tool, which you can see here. So with this tool from FreeSky you can uh, update the firmware of the receiver. As you can see here it says upgrade cable for DFT, DJT, D8R, D8R2 Plus and XP. So it's not expensive, I got it from a UK store. You need this one and you need, uh, in my case I had the D8R2 uh, Plus which has the same hardware like the XP version so basically what I did was I upgraded it with the XP firmware version so now I can have RSSI readout from this receiver in order to do it it's pretty simple uh, I just plugged in my laptop so you can see here what you need to do just let me bring it closer so uh, you just need to follow the connection of the XP which you can see here so it's not a big deal really the, the hardware is the same this is the cable as I've shown you before and this is the pinout what I didn't understand is why on an official tool you still don't have plug and play capability so you basically need to unplug cables and connect it manually whatever so what you need to know is two things um, First of all, in order to, to get the receiver in programming mode, you need to link channel 7 and channel 8. So this is the first thing you need to do. Channel 7 and channel 8 are here on the bottom. You can see it's really pretty easy, minus plus signal. So basically you just need to take one of the pins that you already have and plug in the signal side uh, in the bottom and basically connect these two together. Then the receiver will go in programming mode. So when you power it, uh, I, I use a two cell uh, battery, the status LED will not blink anymore. So this is how you know it's in the programming mode. Then from the original cable, like you see here, you just need to connect the, the black on, on the top. The yellow uh, will be in the, the yellow, it's the receiver here but it's the transmitter on the on the on the receiver and here the brown is the transmitter basically becomes the rx the receiver on the on the actually fresca receiver so this is how you need to connect it it's pretty simple plug this into the usb and then you have this uh, fresca update and then basically you just browse the file uh, I use the this one XP CPPM 27 milliseconds load it and then you have no issues uh, it will work just make sure you select the right uh, COM port in my case I already updated so I'm not gonna do it again just something to keep in mind when you have the uh, CPPM uh, firmware installed the LED showing the normal status will be the uh, dim red, so it's a uh, dim uh, green, sorry. So it's not like before. Solid car is just a really dim green color saying that okay, it's working and you know it it's, has the firmware inside. Then you unplug it like this, and you what you need to do it will be basically to let me just show you in the here, this is how you connect it. You already have it available, it's not such a big deal. And then uh, what you will need to do is to connect pin 3 and 4 for the signal. 
and basically on uh, channel 1 you'll have the CPPM so basically everything, all the PWM channels that you have here before from 1 to 8 you'll have them output on the first channel as a CPPM here and on the second channel you have the RSSI output so uh, okay let me close this one so it's not such a big deal it's just yeah, pretty there are many many sources of information just need to put it everything head to head together so remember short uh, pin 7 and 8 you put it into bootloader loading mode then you connect the correct cable according to the PDF sequence on, on these uh, pins then you use the FreeSky update and then uh, load the CPPM 27 milliseconds firmware and basically the D8R2 plus becomes D8RXP so I will show you a short demonstration this is one of the receiver I will use for a future build on my Bixler now the next issue I had here because like I mentioned I am live in Europe and uh, in Europe there are really different regulations I will turn on my Taranis and uh, Switch warning. we will show you basically that uh, uh, you cannot choose uh, the D8 protocol only the D16 so let me just go quickly through everything here so in order to bypass this uh, let's say frustrating issue uh, and use the D8 receiver I used for some time ago uh, an external DJT module which now is not the case anymore so basically as you can see here I can choose internal uh, module I can choose D8 and D16 how can I do this? by using the non-European firmware with the European firmware you only have D16 which is pretty frustrating so it took me some time to understand why it's like this and how I can make it work so basically having the D8 uh, what I did was not to update the internal radio module which some people recommend in the forum but just load the Taranis with the non-European firmware version so this is not very complicated you just connect it to the USB cable and uh, basically just let me show you okay non-european firmware for Taranis so this is what I used you can find it everywhere on the internet it's not such a big deal so this is what I used in order to to make it work sorry for the focusing yeah non-european firmware this is everything you need to, to use so I use the the companion software and choose the non-European firmware mode 2 for in my case or mode 1 if the throttle is on the on the right stick and this will solve everything and basically unlock uh, the Taranis to the uh, D8 modules uh, and uh, such like compatible parts so just to show you that it works so this is the the mini quad that I got from uh, from AIM Hobbies ok let me plug it in and make a short demo ok so it's booting you see already there's the connection here and it's already reading the 491 so I don't have any voltage divider so it shows me the voltage that I get from the ESC to the receiver here as I, I told you before it's the same receiver I hope you can see it here is the DITR XP with the uh, sorry is the DITR plus with the XP firmware maybe you can see here so it's the plus but has the XP firmware because they have the same uh, hardware and as you can see here I have the RSSI value I program one of the keys here minutes and 10 seconds 96 dB and now I can I can fly and know the RSSI level so uh, basically it's not so complicated uh, yeah if you have the non-european uh, Frysky Taranis then it's it's easier if not 
Uh, I was a bit nervous because it's the first time I did uh, this uh, this change of firmware but just keep in mind you just need to change the firmware on the radio not on the module and you will have a working uh, radio with uh, RSSI readout like you like you see here Four minutes and ten so basically seconds, this is the dB. major reason I, I switch my other radio to, to the Taranis Okay, on top there are the, the great capabilities that the radio has, uh, nevertheless this was the main issue, being able to, to fly on a safe distance and not have any, any risk associated with flight. And like I said, these receivers can work with the XP firmware, they are 100% compatible and you have a good price, good range and a RSSI readout without any, any issue. So really I hope this video helps somewhat because uh, I lost quite some time trying to understand how it works. Again, European version, change it to non-European version and then on the uh, DATR Plus change it to the XP firmware and you're good to go with RSSI data, RSSI. Hopefully, like I said, somebody will uh, appreciate this and consider it helpful. Thanks again for watching and uh, until next time, ciao ciao.